Let, let, let's bring on Congresswoman Marsha Fudge, chairwoman of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, Congresswoman Fudge, uh, we're talking about, uh, of course, Congressman Ryan and, and his offensive statements. And it was interesting that he uh, talks about poverty in inner cities, but poverty isn't some foreign concept. It's everywhere, including his own district, Congresswoman. More than 29,000 households in his district receives food stamps. 53% of those households have someone who's working. And 77% uh, of those recipients are white. Poverty crosses all racial and ethnic lines. Uh, don't we need to address all of that rather than scapegoating inner city culture? There is no question about it. I read uh, his statement and actually listened to it. Uh, and I understand that every now and then we are inarticulate, as he says. I also appreciate the fact that he said that we should help in communities and volunteers. I appreciate all of that. But he started in the wrong place. Instead of talking about solving the problem of poverty, he started out talking about blaming people for being poor. Uh, he then quoted uh, Mr. Murray, who is a known racist, Charles and uses Murray. science. That, yes, exactly right, sir. And he uses science to try to support his positions. He also didn't talk about the fact that these very same Republicans, including him, the chair of the Budget Committee, has gutted public education. He has cut dollars for job training. There is no transportation money for people to get to where jobs are. There has been no jobs bill. There has been nothing done but to say that people who don't work are lazy and that he should be not only ashamed of himself but to go and drive in his own community and talk to the 29,000 households in his community who receive food stamps and ask them if they're lazy hmm. ask them if they want to work ask them if it's okay for them to feel bad about not being able to feed their families I think he'd get an earful and I think it'd be very different from what he said in his uh, interview the other day now crystal one of the things that and all of us have said things we've regretted. I right. mean, they weren't yesterday, but they, all of us have. But what I noticed that he did not do, that many have done and many of us have done, he never said he was sorry for what he said. Should he have come right out and apologized to the people that he offended, that he directly attacked, and directly attacked them, referring to Charles Murray, who the Congresswoman said has clearly written statements that many, including me, regard it as racist. Absolutely. I, I think it would have been entirely appropriate and called for for Congressman Ryan to apologize for a statement because many did find it offensive because it was offensive. It was blaming poor people for being poor. It was calling a whole group of people, inner city, quote, people, lazy. And, and he that, said it was generational. So it wasn't just you, it was your daddy, your granddaddy. I mean, that's he said right. it was generational. That's right. And again, if you want to actually tackle these issues, then you have to get beyond the contempt that the right has held for people who are struggling. If you have contempt for a group of people, you are not going to be able to empathize with them. You are not going to be able to understand how you can effectively help them. Here's the other problem. Congressman Ryan has a history of ignoring the facts and the evidence in this area on poverty and what actually works to alle alleviate poverty, on the causes of poverty, which economists are increasingly finding is because of soaring inequality and structural issues. And even within his own budget, he's always relied on, yeah. on wishful thinking and his ideology rather than what scientists and economists actually say to be the truth. Now, you know, you know Chair Lady uh, uh, Fudge, Here's how Paul Ryan tackled poverty in the past. His 2012 budget cut $3.3 trillion over 10 years from low-income programs and gave millionaires $394,000 a year in tax cuts. Mm. So will the millionaires give that money away? I mean, what's the anti-poverty plan there? Listen, uh, let me just say this to you, to you Reverend. I think that... Uh, Paul Ryan underestimates the intelligence of the people of America. Mm. If he, for some reason, believes that just because he said it, people are going to believe it, his actions speak louder than his words. He has done everything he can to derail every single program that would help the poor, that would help children, that would help the elderly. He will say that it is a dependency. It is a cultural dependency. All he is doing is continuing to denigrate the people who want to f for themselves to find the American 
American dream. And he has no intention of letting them get it because the only people he is concerned about are the people who had trust funds like he did when he grew up or the people who give money to his campaigns. He is not in the least bit concerned about the poor people in this country. And I say to him, I am more than willing to invite you to come to a meeting of the Congressional Black Caucus and let's talk about poverty. Mm -hmm. I challenge you today to come and let's talk to people about poverty. Well, Crystal, you know, he is supposed to be the poverty expert for the GOP. And unfortunately, the kind of talk about the poor has become fairly common from the GOP period. Listen to this. Washington is making the poverty trap much worse. The left is making a big mistake here. What they're offering people is a full stomach and an empty soul. The American people want more than that. We don't want to turn the safety net into a hammock that lulls able-bodied people to of dependency and complacency. Teach a man how to fish. He can feed himself for a life. Don't simply feed fish. So these are all statements we hear Ryan all the way through. He's the poverty guy for the party. He was their nominee for vice president. You're not talking about some talker. You're talking about the head of the budget okay. committee, the man who was on the ticket last time saying these kinds of things, Crystal. And he is supposed to be their intellectual heavyweight. I mean, think of that st sad state of affairs. And again, this makes for maybe a fun soundbite or a folksy sounding soundbite, but the evidence doesn't back it up. If you want to help people who are struggling, these government programs do a whole lot of good. And Paul Ryan himself recently re released this 200 page audit of all the social welfare programs in this country. And he inexplicably found, because he didn't want to find this, that a lot of them are doing a lot yes. of good and have helped reduce the poverty Well, Congresswoman right uh, Fudge, I've got to go, but you know a lot of these programs did the reverse. They gave a culture work, neighborhood youth corps, manpower training, yes. model city. They raised kids in my generation to get up and go to work. No question about it. And, and, and if Paul Ryan wants to talk about the soul of America, I ask him to look into his own soul. Because if, if he's saying that we have no soul, he certainly has a hole in his. And he needs to understand that every single person in this country has a right to expect that their government will take care of them in their greatest need. And he knows and we know that these programs have been effective. And if he wants to believe that the only way to cure poverty is to just get rid of all of the poor people, then he's got another thing coming because he's going to have a battle on his hands from people like me and the Congressional Black Caucus. Chairwoman Masha Fudge and Crystal Ball, thank you both for being here tonight. Thank and you. be sure to watch Crystal 